Good afternoon, my name is Chiara Ricci and I'm a conservation scientist. I am Federico Di Iorio, I am a photographer and we would like to share with you our experience at the Center for Conservation and Restoration, La Vinaria Reale, hoping it can be of some help for the advancement of the debate of today. The Center for Conservation and Restoration La Venaria Reale is located near the city of Turin in the northwest of Italy. The center is a no-profit foundation established in 2005 as part of the broader restoration works on the Regia di Venaria Palace and it's located in the former 18th century stable. It hosts the master degree course in conservation and restoration of cultural heritage offered by the University of Turin. The center includes several departments, including nine different conservation laboratories, the scientific laboratories, the advanced training and study school, and the educational services. Therefore, many are the artworks and materials to be faced in conservation activities, paintings on canvas and panels, wooden furniture and artifacts, stone and wall paintings, contemporary art, textiles, paper, metals, ceramic and glass artifacts, and even human remains. Considering the broad range of topics and materials, multidisciplinarity is of course the key. And that's why our work teams always involve different professionals, such as conservators, scientists, photographers, art historians, archaeologists, and so on. The scientific laboratories daily work side by side with conservators, supporting all conservation activities with photographic and multispectral imaging documentation, non-invasive and micro-invasive analytical technique. More specifically, the analyses performed by the scientific laboratories support all aspects of the conservation activities. The study of the original materials and technique, the condition assessment, and the investigation of deterioration phenomena, the testing and monitoring of conservation treatments or products, as well as the documentation dissemination and training. The photographic and multispectral imaging laboratory carries out two and three dimensional documentation of artifacts and external sites at every stage of the conservation process, namely before, during and after it, providing conservators, conservation scientists and art historians with essential information for a more complete understanding of the work and a clear perspective on the advancement of the intervention. The photographic techniques aim to document the state of preservation of each object and are based on the basic principle of archaeological photography, such as correct representation of shapes, measurement accuracy and uniformity of illumination. The term multispectral imaging refers to a set of non-invasive analyses that allow the reproduction of artworks using different electromagnetic bands, other than the visible one. Thanks to appropriate changes, the sensor of normal cameras is then able to record information from a range of wavelengths much wider than the visible one, including also the ultraviolet and infrared region. Therefore, in addition to the more traditional photos collected with diffuse and raking visible light, the laboratory can provide ultraviolet and infrared images. One of the most used non-invasive techniques in the conservation field is ultraviolet fluorescence photography. It permits to easily distinguish repaintings from the original painting. Indeed, overlaid and more recent materials look darker when illuminated with ultraviolet light. This examination can also highlight the possible presence of vanish or protective materials on the surface of the artwork. 
Visible photography represents the most important part in the process of documenting an artifact. It allows to record the current state of preservation and helps to show the surface appearance visible to the naked eye, as well as being an important evidence in case of a conservative conservation intervention. The image of an artwork obtained by means of infra infrared photography may appear significantly different from how it appears to the naked eye. In fact, some pigment layers, opaque to visible light, may be partially transparent to the infrared radiation, highlighting underdrawings, pentimenti, or lacunas. Moreover, this technique can make difficult to read areas of the painting more readable and suggest a discrimination of pigments that may appear similar but present a different absorption of the infrared radiation. This technique is preparatory to false color, an image that combines visible and infrared data to generate a third result in post-production. With infrared false color photography, it is possible to make an initial hypothesis about the original pigments used by the artist and those possibly added later on occasion of conservation intervention. False color can in fact provide useful information on the identity of a pigment through comparison with databases. It is, however, risky to draw a conclusion based solely on the observation of the infrared color result, since pigments were often used, mixed or overlaid in several layers. The visible induced luminescence is an infrared analysis. The physical principle of the technique is the same that occurs for ultraviolet fluorescence, but in this case the emission happens in the near infrared region. The luminescence is centered around 910 nanometers and it is an effective method to characterize Egyptian blue, Han blue and Han purple on different types of surfaces. SWIRS stand for short wave infrared. It indicates the infrared region closest to the visible spectrum but, unlike the infrared reflectography, the sensor of these special instruments can record information down to 1700 nanometers. This technique, as the previous, allows to examine the preparation layer below the pigment layer, supporting conservators in the reading of the underdrawing. The three-dimensional representation generated by photograph especially when measurable, facilitate this partial interpretation of an object, allowing the viewer to perceive its true shape. The integration of multispectral data from the previous techniques multiplies the possibility of understanding an artifacts. Other techniques for bidimensional and three-dimensional documentation respectively consist in digital radiography and computer tomography. The center is provided with a system to perform X-ray imaging on large objects. These imaging techniques allow to investigate the spatial distribution of the materials composing the artwork and to see the inner structure and assembly of all parts in three-dimensional objects. Still speaking of non-invasive analysis, different portable instruments are available at the center to perform spectroscopy techniques like X-ray fluorescence spectroscopy, Rama spectroscopy, and fiber optics reflectance spectroscopy. They can all be of great help for the characterization of either original and non-original materials, such as supports, inorganic pigments, or dyes, just to cite a few. When preliminary non-invasive techniques are not sufficient to reply to all questions or con from conservators, we apply then microinvasive diagnostic techniques, namely those which require sampling from the artwork. 
An example is given by the infrared spectroscopy, which can be used to identify both organic and inorganic compounds, whether they are constitutive materials or degradation products. After sampling and preparation of cross-sections, it is also possible to investigate the artwork stratigraphy by means of microscopy techniques. Samples can be observed through optical and scanning electron microscopes. The same techniques find many other applications, ranging from the identification of natural fibers to the monitoring of conservation treatments. Microscopy is also one of the most used techniques for biological analysis, which are performed to identify microorganisms or other biological agents of deterioration. Nonetheless, the activities carried out by the scientific laboratories are not limited to diagnostic, but also focus on research and tests on mock-ups, aiming to develop innovative methodologies verify the effectiveness of new products, monitoring the conservation treatments applied over the time, and create databases of reference materials. Finally, the scientific team of the Center for Conservation and Restoration La Veneria Reale also contributes to the development and realization of national and international training programs, workshops and webinars addressed to conservation students and professionals. Thanks for your attention.